Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cropper here. How do we explain the difference between atheism and theism in the new and the old world, Europe versus America? How is it that Europe has more atheists? How bizarre that a free country, America, would have less atheists, more believers? Um, I bring this question before you in a serious tone of voice because Leonard Peikoff couldn't figure out the answer to it. Um, and Christopher Hitchens knows the answer, but doesn't realize that it's at all significant. So Leonard Peikoff, uh, in one of his podcasts, he reads the question, how do you explain the difference between atheism and theism? A rationalist would just look at it and say, well, a freer country would be a more reasonable country, would be a more atheist country. Real rationalists will do that. Is there anything else going on behind the scenes that we need to take a look at, maybe? Um, there must be, because America seems to be more rational, but is not more atheistic. So, what is going on? Peacock reads the question and says, uh, I'm not sure, I'll think about it. Then, a few podcasts later, he reads the question over again, and he says, um, I am flabbergasted, I don't have any idea. Um, he said, uh, if you know, or if anybody out there has any information on this, please let me know. Fairly reasonable um, uh, question for him to, to request that uh, we call in with the information, but I thought... I'll go ahead and give the answer here because uh, I assume he already has the answer. And if he doesn't, maybe he can get it from me. Wouldn't that be a strange world? Um, the fact is that if you want to reduce the numbers that you're producing, if you want to produce less, you put the government in control. We all know this, ladies and gentlemen. We all know that the government is not good at producing things. It is lethargic, wasteful, indifferent, lazy, incompetent, and any other uh, pejorative you want to pile on there. The government is that when it comes to production. Um, they exported wheat for decades from Russia. I mean, they continue to export it in the 20s and 30s, but that was just for hard gold to industrialize. But up into the 20s and 30s, they exported wheat and everyone ate. They were all fed. There was no shortage, no hunger in Russia, right up into, I mean, poverty created hunger. But there was no necessarily a shortage of grain as such. Uh, fast forward 50 years after uh, Stalin industrialized, 50 years after he industrialized, um, in 1972, the great grain robbery occurred. Uh, the Russia was so short on grain they had to actually come to America. They sent hundreds of agents across the country and went to every little establishment in every local area and bought as much grain as they could before the harvest was even out of the field, before it was even harvested. Uh, they had purchased up almost all of it. So strange, uh, strange and interesting fact that we might take note of. If you're going to say the government needs to control this. You need to be prepared to have the numbers of production fall. Now, the government, you might be surprised to learn, controls religion in Europe. It doesn't control it, but it has some control. For example, you want to build a mosque or a synagogue or a church in France, uh, the government provides the funds. You want to build one in Denmark, I think 5 or 10% of the funds. In Sweden, 25%. I don't know what the specific specifics are, and perhaps they change constantly and occasionally. Uh, but whatever the case is, the government is... The, they didn't believe that religion should be left on its own. They believed it should have some supervision. Um, in England, the head of the church is the queen, or the head of the state and armed forces. The, the uh, queen or the head of the church can't say anything in the church, can't uh, preach in church, but doesn't matter too much. Um, as, a, as a person in Britain, you're mandated to pay tithes. You have to pay tithes to somebody. Um, I don't know if you have to pay it to the Church of England and then you can do other ones, or if you get to choose the church, and it probably has to be state-recognized. I don't know. But um, uh, tithes are, are, are voluntary in America. Um, now, with the state controlling all this stuff, with the state and their hands and fingers so deep into this, into religion, um, are you surprised that people become skeptical, lethargic, indifferent, don't care, unconvinced, not converted? Is that a surprise? doesn't seem surprising to me. And look on the flip side of it in America, where you can open any church you want anytime, 
and their that's tax free church is tax free which is why almost all um, private schools are, are church oriented is, is to get out of the taxation system um, here you have churches that start up with zero taxation and uh, they if, if they don't convert members they shut down if they do convert members they grow uh, fast forward 200 years what do we have in America we have churches that convert people churches that convince people Athena is attacking an innocent old man um, I think that I can rest my case there evolution in America allows churches to become more sophisticated and advanced and lack of uh, evolution or uh, the imposition of state control in Europe causes the exact opposite, a shrinking of faith. Uh, fairly obvious once you know all of the parts that go into it, isn't it?